Glory to God. God is good. Okay, so Jesus is actually teaching his disciples, so he starts out on one subject, and then he sort of changes the subject as he goes. But, you know, we're just going to go along with him. Look at verse 3, talking to his disciples, he said, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against you, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Wow. Hallelujah. God is good. You just came out of a holiday uh, event. Strong possibility you probably spent some time with family. Maybe there were some edges on some things. Well, here, here's just a little insight for you. You can actually forgive them right where you sit and let it go by. Hallelujah. Now, there's this supernatural thing that will happen. The blood of Jesus will be applied to whatever events you were involved in, and it'll be washed away. And then, you know, the, the great thing is, is your, your mind will be restored. You know, I, I have people come to me and say, you know, over and over again, you know, I want to ask you to forgive me. And I say, well, for what? I don't remember what they're talking about. Maybe you've had that happen a few times. I don't know. Hallelujah. God is good. But you can let it go by and your conscience, you know, your personal self will be cleansed. If you hold on to it, you're going to become a bitter herb somewhere. <laughs> Verse 4, And if he trespass against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again to you and says, I repent, you shall forgive him. Hallelujah. God is good. That was a good place to say amen. Sure got quiet in this Christian house all of a sudden. All right, uh, look at verse 5. And the apostles said unto him, Lord, increase our faith. So, in, in other words, that was a major struggle for them to deal with, you know, forgiving somebody that many times in one day. So they said, well, we're going to have to have more faith to do that. Okay, so this starts out as a lesson on faith, but then it switches. Okay, so look at uh, chapter, uh, verse 6. It says, And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. So, uh, you know, that, what that's telling me is it, you can have just a little bit of faith, and if you put it into practice, it's going to do uh, earth-changing things. Verse 7, but which of you having a servant, now here, here's where he kind of goes into something, and we're going to follow what he's doing, but, you know, what, what this is going to help you with, it's going to help you to look into the culture of the day and see what they thought or the way they thought about people working in their midst. Okay, and, and technically it's about servants. Which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he's come in from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterwards you shall eat and drink. Now that almost sounds like it's a tad cold uh, in, in today's world from, coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let, let's kind of uh, rehearse this a little bit so that you think that, so you don't think ill of Jesus. Uh, or have some sort of a, an issue, you know, with, with the uh, mentality of that day. But, uh, and it started in the Law of Moses, and it was actually uh, way before that. You know, re remember the nation of Israel were held captive by uh, Egypt, and they were forced labor to build uh, the, the uh, kingdom there, the kingdom of Egypt. 
All those pyramids and everything that, that you see, that's what that's, they were involved in all of that. Hallelujah. But then they were released, God released them with the Passover, and they went out uh, in grand style. Praise the Lord. Now, so, uh, but here's the thing to keep in mind. That word servant, uh, he's talking about an employee would be the easiest way for us to understand that. And, uh, you know, in our culture today, there are many people who sign work contracts where they obligate themselves for longer than a day or two to complete the contract. You know, the sports people that we uh, watch play football and, and all these different things, most of them are on a contract basis. So they, they sign a contract and uh, they work. Now, that's what a servant did in those days. Now, uh, as it turns out, remember they had the year of Jubilee. I'm kind of filling in the blanks for you. They had the year of Jubilee, which ran for a full 50 years. And at the end of the 50-year period, every person that was in service or had an existing contract going, they had to be released. And they were turned out. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm telling you all this for a reason because there, there's a provision in the law that says, but if they decide that they don't actually want to go, they can go to the uh, employer and say, well, you know, I want to be here forever. In other words, I want to go beyond the Jubilee, and I, I want to uh, serve here. I, want, I like this house. I love these people. I don't want to leave yet. So he's then called a bond servant. Now, the Apostle Paul, Peter, and others call themselves bond servants. Now, the way a bond servant, the, you know, the way they inducted him into that service is they put his ear, it's, it's like our ear piercing today, they put his ear on a doorpost and uh, with an awl, yeah, poked a hole in his ear and put a, put a ring in his ear and then he was eternally in service from that point out. Okay, hallelujah. So when you have a, a person working under contract, which is what Jesus is talking about, you know, uh, he, well, uh, you, I would recommend that you're kind to them, nice to them, Praise the Lord, but it still doesn't preclude the, the reality of the fact that they are working for you. That was a good place to say amen. Will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and then gird yourself, this is verse 8 again, and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward you may eat and drink. Okay, now... Uh, a, a good little word picture of this is the movie Ben-Hur. Okay, well, they, they had a servant living in the house. Remember, he, was, he actually became a part of the family. And, and uh, he, he, was, he loved everybody in the family, and he became their bond servant. Uh, verse 9, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? Jesus said, well, I don't think so. I trow not. Verse 10, so likewise you, when you shall have done all these things which are commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Hallelujah. Now, remember he started out using this as an analogy about faith. So, uh, what, and what Jesus is really teaching on is, is what you should use your faith for ought to be like one of these contracts that we have, a work contract. So, you have someone in your hire, and, and you've got faith that belongs to you, and you need to learn how to use your faith the same way you send an employee on a... Uh, Campaign. Praise the Lord. Okay, so uh, in this passage, Jesus resultingly revealed a servant's heart 
in teaching on faith. Praise the Lord. God is good. Okay, so uh, what, what he did and what we did, we just used the passage as a little uh, view into their lives in those days. You know, today people are very touchy about being a servant. And so it, it takes effort to get past that with people because they've been conditioned to think that, you know, e even as an employee, well, they have to ask me. Well, I mean, the last time I checked, you were working for them. You, they're, they're paying you. Ask you to do what? To do what you're getting paid to do? But that, that's just part of the culture today. Hallelujah. Well, I came to work. You expect, expect me to work too? <laughs> that's just kind of a local joke. Are you out there? All right. So, if you would, uh, I'll show you more of this. If you would go with me over to 2 Peter chapter 1. Praise the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. All right, so look, look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, notice that he referred to himself as being a servant before the office of the apostle. You know, you know in today's world, it would be reversed. Because people would be sort of ashamed of, being, of calling themselves a servant. Now, the reason why I'm going through all of this is you will not be able to arrive at the reality of a servant's heart as long as you have a localized condition for your service. You know, one of the things that Jesus was pointing out is that a servant doesn't choose his time or the method of his service. He has to go ahead and serve. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Okay, so Peter, you know, was raised in, with this understanding of being a bondservant. That's actually what he, that, that's the word that he used there, even though it's not shown in the English. But he, he called himself a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, so uh, that, that's what, what I have done. I, I'm a bondservant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do what he, wants, what he wants me to do, when he wants me to do it, the way he wants me to do it. I'm under command. I don't have a problem with being under command. I don't mind being a servant. I don't, like being told, I, I don't mind being told what to do by the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, so the Apostle Paul also introduced himself as a servant. Hallelujah. You know, it's, it's like, a, like people give me their business card and, and they've got, all, you know, all of these offices uh, of who, who they are and what, what they do on their business card. I, I haven't seen one that just says servant. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, uh, if you would please back up on to uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, and we're going to take this service uh, a little deeper. I'm going to show you, put some terminology in your thinking, give you a chance to bite into this, and then I believe in the mighty name of Jesus that you're going to be compelled by the Spirit of God based upon what the Word of God says, you're going to be able to launch into a new part of your lifestyle. Now, you know, in this series, there are benefits that belong to a servant that don't, a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are, there are benefits that belong to us that other people miss out on. So, uh, but I, I'll, I'm going to share the, the heart with you first of all. So, the heart uh, basically says, I'm not looking for a way to get out of this. 
I don't mind what I'm doing. I like what I'm doing. I like serving the Lord. Hallelujah. So I don't consider it to be a job. It's not an occupation. Everybody that I was trained by I called themselves a servant all the way through here. So I don't have any problem with being a servant. Glory to God. Okay. So, uh, uh, and, and we're going to, I'm going to break this down so you can see we're kind of jumping into another aspect of this. But if you would look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. Hallelujah. And uh, every person in this room that has accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior actually also already occupies an office of the ministry. Now, your office might be standing idle. In which case, it would be uh, not a, a good thing for you. Okay, so in uh, verse 11, he's actually breaking the offices down into two functions. Uh, first of all, and I want to show you the historical, biblical, historical part of that. Praise the Lord. First of all is the speaking gift. And then secondly, there is the serving gift. Hallelujah. Now the Apostle Paul, as a matter of fact, what he did was he, he would, and I just read a, to you about Peter. He, he was exactly the same way. He introduced himself as a servant first and then an apostle. The word apostle means special sent messenger. So it's a speaking gift. Amen. Same thing with the Apostle Paul. Okay, but look at verse 11. He says, if any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. Now this is actually talking about benefit. Uh, if any man minister, that, that word minister is the Greek, Greek word diakonia. Okay, and it's the word from which we get the word deacon. Now, you know, deacons in, in today's world have been taken astray. And uh, so, so you need to understand that's not what the office stands for. In fact, I'm going to read it to you in just a moment. If any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it with the ability which God gives. Now, the word ability is the Greek word dunamis. So, in other words, God provides power to work through these offices to accomplish purpose. Hallelujah. And, and uh, you know, the Apostle Paul said, I say through the grace given unto me. And he, he was naming the grace of God as one of the power functions of his office. And other people were able to watch what the Apostle Paul did, and they recognized that it was the grace of God that gave him the ability to go into all of these foreign places and deal with people. Now, you know how if you're paying attention to the news, uh, people don't like Jewish people. And it's kind of a, almost like a, you know, a worldwide thing. Well, they didn't like Jewish people back then either. So when the Apostle Paul went to these places, you know, they knew just by looking at him uh, where he came from, who he was, what he spoke like. You know, they knew he was a Jew. And so he said, I became all things to all men that I might win some. So he dropped his Jewishness so he could uh, reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Are you there? Now, so uh, the, what, you know, the, these people, like the Apostle Paul and Peter, are the two that I'm using primarily here tonight as an example. Uh, both of them introduced themselves, first of all, as a servant and then an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that word ability means that God is the one that provides the power for uh, the office of the deacon, the, the server, to function. He provides the power. 
Praise the Lord. So, if, if you're serving in a church capacity and you're complaining about it and sort of drudging along, that's another way of saying you don't have any power in your life. You know, it would be pretty obvious that, you know, that that's not a, bl a blessing. Praise the Lord. So, uh, one of the things that, uh, that is taught us to do from the Word early on is not to complain about serving. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. So, uh, here, here's a, a little thing that I learned years ago. If you're complaining about something that you have authority over, you're actually complaining about yourself. And w which is uh, deriding of yourself. It, it's another way of just sort of breaking yourself down in image st structure. And what God is trying to do is build us up in who we are in Christ Jesus. He's trying to build us up. That's the reason why Jesus died at Calvary. Because man, mankind has been pushed down by the enemy. That's the reason why we had to go through such an explanation about just being a servant. I like serving. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm serving the Lord, but what He commissions me to do is serve you. Amen. I like it. I like what I'm doing. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't consider it work. I don't consider it drudge. You know, I don't call it names. I'm excited about the opportunity to do my part in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so I will read this verse to you again all the way through. If any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. Oracles of God, oracle means a living word, which is another way of saying if it's a speaking gift that he's using, it's his voice coming through the Vessel, it's like a megaphone kind of a thing. Hallelujah, uh, and it and it it affects people. Okay, so uh, it, it's actually the way the kingdom of God is built. So the reason why Jesus took so much time to put all these things in his disciples is because they would become the speaking mouth. For the kingdom of God, you can find all of that right there in the book of Acts. On the day of Pentecost, you know, Peter, who was a, a fisherman, you know, and, and just a few days before he was denying Christ, but on the day of Pentecost, he was completely changed, stepped into his office, and stood up and preached the first anointed sermon on Jesus that had ever been preached on earth. Now, you know, he didn't have any notes. He didn't do, you know, a lot of planning. Oh, go ahead and say amen. But he, he just stood up and started preaching. 3,000 people. Now, it's because what came out of him convicted the people in the crowd. And they wanted to be changed. First of all, they wanted the power of the Holy Ghost because they witnessed it. And they said, that's what I want. I want that instead of this. You know, and, and they were there uh, on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem to uh, observe a feast, which was smelly animals being killed. Uh, well, there wasn't anything pretty about it. It was, uh, it was nothing joyful or you know, it, it was, uh, and then there were people trying to sing it away. Uh, the singers, they, they were an appointment of the Levitical tribe. Okay, they, they were trying to uh, put a, a good spin on it is what I would call it. Hallelujah. But it was still, you know, when they saw the Holy Ghost, they, they said, well, you know, I'm out of here. I'm done. Even though I'm Judean, I'm done with Judean stuff. I'm done with this. And they wanted the Holy Ghost. That's a good place to say amen. If any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. If any man minister. Now, a lot of times when you're talking about the, like I did, just did, I embellished just a little bit on the oracle. 
Okay, and people have a tendency, whoa, we get excited. Okay, uh, overlooking the fact that the ministry that he's talking about, the service that he's talking about, is just as anointed as the speaking part. Let him do it as of the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, so if you would please, going to ask you to go with me over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Look at verse 28 and Often what you find in these, these lift, lists of giftings, you've got different giftings grouped up next to other giftings. So I, I'm going to walk you through this just for the sake of, of uh, illustration so that you'll know what you're dealing with. Praise the Lord. Uh, look at verse 28. It says, And God hath set some in the church. First, apostles, secondarily, prophets, thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles. So, there are people set in the church to conduct miracles, like uh, the, they're actually that gift to the body. Okay. Miracles, then gifts of healings. That, that, you know, if you look right over in the first part of this same chapter, those are listed with the gifts of the Spirit, okay? Which can and do happen at random in services, Holy Ghost services like this. That was a good place to say amen. So then, miracles, gifts of healings, and then right on the heels of that is this little word helps. Now, the word helps uh, just simply means to render service and aid to people. Praise the Lord. And it's associated with that word diakonia. Governments is uh, a similar placement. Uh, so, governments is, a, is an office that functions in the church for God to work through to... Uh, organize things. Like in this church, you know, we have several people that work in an organizational fact, uh, factory of uh, faction of uh, taking care of the finances and, and so forth. And, and brother, it is complicated. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, then he ends up the list with diversities of tongues. So, uh, Here's some more terminology for you. The, the, words, the word governments uh, also is speaking about the oversight ministries. Like in this church, we have what we call department heads or team leaders over functions of the ministry. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, wow, they're, they're overseers. Okay, so the word bishops... Now, that, that's a, a word that's been misused, okay? But the word bishops actually is the Greek word episkopos, okay? And it, it means the same thing as the, the other word elders, which simply means to oversee. That's the definition of it. So, governments is talking about overseeing things, okay? And so, elders is presbyterios, now, you know, when I hear those words, I, 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 my thinking goes directly to the denominations that are named like that. And, and then, so I'm able to see how they use this as a means of church government. And, and they, their whole denomination is set up in an Episcopalian way or a Presbyterian way. Forgive me. I, you know, I'm just letting you know. I personally, I decided when I was growing up in the Lord that, you know, uh, I don't want to be a part of a denomination. I want to uh, do what God wants me to do without the uh, overriding influence of man on me. Praise the Lord. 
God is good. Okay, so then there are bishops and elders that are a part of the grouping. Glory to God. But uh, in the same group is Helps Ministries, which looks very small and insignificant. And people have a tendency to, oh, gee, he's, he's, it's right there next to miracles, gifts of healings, and diversities of tongues. Right in the middle of that is the little word Helps. It's just as supernatural. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, where did that come from? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's right here in your Bible. Uh, if you would turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 6. Hallelujah. So while you're turning over there, uh, there's this word office that is used. And uh, office is just simply the function that you're called into. Praise the Lord. And then what God does is he, he has actually obligated himself to power the office that you're called into so that you are not acting out of your own right. You actually have power to work with. Okay, so Acts chapter 6, verse 1, it says, And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians, this is among the Christians, Grecians against the Hebrews. Now, you know, this, this was before the New Testament was written. So the Apostle Paul is the one who got the revelation that in Christ Jesus is neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek, so there weren't any Grecians and there weren't any Hebrews, but they didn't know that yet. So they got into a tussle with each other. And, you know, that they were used to that. That's the way they related to each other. Okay, now that you should understand that's natural, that's not spiritual. Praise the Lord. Okay, so the Grecians against the Hebrews because they're widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So, uh, you know, one group is saying, well, our widows are being neglected. You know, there, there's a daily feeding, but not everybody, it, it's not fair. Are you there? Verse 2, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, Well, as, first of all, it's not reason that we should leave the Word of God and serve tables. So they, they were probably, the, the apostles were the ones who were doing the serving. And, uh, you know, there's only 11 of them at that time. And so they didn't have enough hands on deck to handle everything. So they, they said, okay, so we're going to uh, start a new office here. Wherefore, brethren, look out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, you know, as you read through the book of Acts, you see this group of people develop. Verse 4, uh, so uh, next verse he says, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And as soon as they did that, the church just exploded again and started growing. Glory to God. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you. So that's actually the beginning of the office of the deacon. Uh, that, that's the scriptural beginning. Now, the office of the deacon became something that it's not in today's world. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Okay, so if you would go with me now over to Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. There's this word that keeps cropping up in the New Testament. It's, it's, a, it's a translation. It's the word office. Okay, and you're, you uh, are sitting in an office of the ministry. Now, you know, it could be that you're not doing anything with it. But that, that's, you know, between you and the Lord, and He's going to have to deal with you about what it is that He has for you to do. Because, you know, it's, it's like I showed you the differentiation in the, uh, it's like a labor division. 
there were the speaking parts and the serving parts. And so what, what happens a lot of times is people say, well, I'm, I'm a speaking part. And uh, they completely overlook the serving part. And it's, it's really nothing but a, uh, it's a ruse. Hallelujah. Okay, so if you would look at verse 4, it says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, then he goes into another one of these lists in Romans chapter 12 of giftings. Praise the Lord. But, you know, uh, uh, this has been said in more places than one. Uh, And so when you got saved, you were actually set in the church. That's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so you were set in an office, and God, the way he sees you is based upon what he has called you to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm glad I came to church tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so I'm going to ask you if you would please stand to your feet for just a moment. Sure got quiet in this Christian house all of a sudden. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Now what, you know, uh, I I should uh, let you know, I have no control over what you're called to do. Okay, Uh, but I will say to you that uh, it's up to you to determine what it is that God wants you to do. You know, I I will tell you this, there are many people in this church that have already found out what their uh, office is. So we have minstrels, uh, we we have a praise and worship team, hallelujah, we have an administrative backup, okay, but then we also have soul winning groups and prayer groups. Praise the Lord. But uh, also, guess what? Uh, Someone has to clean the place up. Hallelujah. God is good. Okay, so I'm going to ask our guys if you would uh, uh, move this out of the way. And, you know, earlier while we were in worship... The Lord dealt with me, and uh, he let me know that there would be people in this room who were standing on the cusp of a healing, and you, there's just something that needs to happen to push the whole thing forward. But uh, you, you need healing in your body, and it's, it's going to take a, a push by him uh, to uh, change things. So if I'm talking to you and you say, well, you know, I I would like to have some help with the operation of my faith with my healing. If I'm talking to you, come up here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Good to be here tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, laying on of hands is a direct application of power, okay? But that said, there's also uh, how, uh, and and here's something that you find in in the scriptures. Luke chapter 4 talks about how there was a group of people sitting before Jesus in a house or in, in a place. It says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. You know, and so that there were this these group of guys who wanted to. There, there was a, a person who was laid out on a pallet. They had the palsy, so they got up on the roof and tore the roof, tore a hole in the roof, and let let the guy down. And it, Jesus never laid hands on a person in the room. All he did was say, "Your sins are forgiven you." And that, that blew, you know, it blew away all the religious people. So now he's just forgiving people. Praise the Lord. God is good. And, and he did. 
Hallelujah. But the man jumped up, with, got his pallet, and ran out of the room healed. Hallelujah. The Lord. So sometimes uh, it's not through the laying on of hands. Praise the Lord. God is good. You know, when we're worshiping, the healing power, the healing anointing, the, the power of the Lord to heal comes in the room, and he, he begins moving around. Okay, and that, that would be a good time for you to uh, decide, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to kind of uh, slip out of this mode that I'm in, and I'm going to uh, suddenly become a spiritual person. What I'm here for is to worship. And, and if, you're, if you go ahead and engage that, what will happen is the healing power of God will come on you. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But uh, I am going to lay hands on you. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So recovery is what we're after. Technically, you're not the sick, but uh, hallelujah, we're going to lay hands on you and activate something on the inside of you working in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. So there, there's going to be power that's going to come into your physical person as soon as I lay hands on you. And so one of the things that we learn how to do is walk in power. Okay. And a lot of it has to do with what you say with your mouth. Hallelujah. Like I've got it. Hallelujah. Be healed in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you father for doing that extra part that's necessary for each person in Jesus' precious holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is good. Now, so I, I say that what's going to happen in your body is if there are aberrant cells, they're going to die and desist and cease to function yes. in your life. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glad I came to church tonight. If there's any, any part, let, let's pick out the organs. Let's say all of your organs have to respond to the power of God and function normally, whatever that may, might be. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. That's right. If it's a kidney thing, then your kidneys have to suddenly start working. Praise the Lord. Yeah, no more dialysis. Glory to God. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name that is above every name. So every manifestation of sickness and disease has to leave your body. Whatever it may be, in Jesus' name, that's right. Hallelujah, it has to leave. Aberrant cells have to die and desist 
from their assignment. They can't live effectively in your physical body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you had a broken hand. Uh, tendons. Tendons. Okay. Okay. Is that what you're here for? Okay. So what you need is uh, for the thing to start working correctly for a restoration of all of the function without pain and without stiffness. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Getting your vision back. Yes. yes. Do away with diabetes. Do away with diabetes. Yes. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Healing power going into your physical body, affecting a perfect cure. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, all manifestation of sickness and disease has to flee. Thank you, Jesus. And you're going to walk home, go home, walking in divine power. There's a reason why it's called divine healing. It's not the same thing as just getting over it. Hallelujah. It's God uh, affecting a perfect cure. Hallelujah. And the power goes home with you. Power stays with you. And you should call yourself healed. As long as your mouth cooperates with the power of God, the power will stay on you and in you. By his stripes ye were healed. So if you were healed, that means you are healed. Right now, healing has become a part of your life because of who you are in Christ Jesus, because of the price that he paid for us at Calvary. How are you? It's good to see you. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to the King. God is good. Hallelujah. Now remember, you're a vessel, so your, your person is being filled up with the healing power of God. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to carry it with you. Now, you know, what you don't want to do is slosh it around. So, uh, hallelujah. I've had that happen to me where I, I got drunk in the spirit from uh, jumping up and down. Because uh, the, the power on the inside of me, I was, I was uh, yeah, going in the wrong direction with it. Praise the Lord. I was, I was trying to have a feeling. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. We bless you. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So I say openly that every person that had hands laid on them is leaving with power in them because they're a vessel. Power remains. Yeah, just make sure that you say with your mouth, by his stripes I am healed. Glory to God. Okay, so we're, we're going to be dismissed. Oh, oh, two more. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So you're taking these to uh, people that you know. Your sister, okay. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for supernatural power. That's right. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the demons that are running her life are going to run. 
Yeah, because that's what the problem is, is she's got demons. Hey, good. Okay, so there's no contest. Hallelujah. Okay, so get your hands up in the air if you would, please. Just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray in other tongues. Confess the word and walk in power. Hallelujah. That's right. We're going to be dismissed.